everyone, welcome to another episode of Look Out and Shout. And today we're doing an unboxing video. Who doesn't love an unboxing video? So today we're looking at Zeta Toys Superitron. Did it used to be called Kronos? I seem to recall it was called Kronos. It's Zeta's representation of a masterpiece, Aerobots or Superior. And some lovely, lovely box here. Lovely box art. It's uh, got some lovely design on the back as well. It's a very big box. This is obviously the gift set that it all comes with. And you can see all of the artwork for all the individual bots. Now this artwork actually scales with the Baruticus set that they've done earlier as well. I will point out from the start, this is the metallic edition, the metallic paint that I think is fairly recent. I'm not sure if it's a re-release of a version they've done before. They've just done a crystal set. But yeah, I saw this and it was one that I was looking to get before. I actually think the artwork, looking at it, that looks like the original paint scheme. I just don't think they've changed the box. But trust me, it is a metallic edition. Right. So much like with Bruticus, you can get these big padded gift sets that everything comes with. Now I will say at this point, I have taken the box out just so when I show you it doesn't fall everywhere. But you get the general idea how everything is housed comes with the guns and everything like that. What I have still got in here, and this is quite nice, you've got all of these little gift cards or stack cards. So what you have here is Slingshot, Silver Bolt, Superior on itself, Skydive, Air Raid and Fire Flight. And on the back you have all of their individual stats as well. And they come out of their little binder, or you just fold them all the way, so nice to see. Also included is, is the instructions, which we will be needing. Uh, it comes with the lovely artwork that's on the back of the box, and it's a complete amalgamation of the instructions in here. There's quite a lot. Shows you how to get from robot mode into combined mode and vehicle mode as well. Also tells you what batteries you need to operate the lights in Superior's head. It goes through all of the characters there. So yeah, pretty comprehensive. Right, so now the bots are out of their packaging, let's take a look at them, shall we? And here is Skydive in his robot mode. Now, I did think when I was looking at the images on this online, I thought Skydive was probably the weakest looking of the figures in robot mode, and sadly that is true in person. The metallic paint doesn't do quite the justice that you would like. The red on the chest doesn't pop as much, and the grey or the charcoal black doesn't really shine in metallic either. But what is good, if I bring it in a bit closer, you can see, I love the eyes, that kind of steely blue eye on there, that pops quite well. The orange face, probably about the same as the original colouring as well. It's not a terrible representation of the figure, but it's not as good as I would have hoped. The metallic paint pops a lot more on the metallic form of the jet. So the alt mode is probably going to look much nicer than this. I just feel that when you look at the arms and the legs, the charcoal black used around here, whilst there is a bit of sheen to it, it can just look a little bit dead, just a bit dark, not really a lot of life to it. Even the red looks a bit too muted for me. But it cleans up quite well, particularly around the back. That is quite a tidy jet mode, particularly when you look at the legs as well. It folds away a jet quite nicely, all things considered. You have got these peg holes in the top, which do stand out a little bit. I would have liked to have seen those covered up. Not an awful representation of the figure, but probably the weakest one of them all. They've all got this covering over the wrist, which obviously plays into the alt mode and combine mode. It's a shame it does kind of stand out. I would have, would have liked that to have come up to have been a cleaner finish on the wrist. And here are the accessories that Skydive comes with. Now he's the only one who comes with a double barrel gun. So that's attached, pegs in quite easily. On the shoulders there are four holes that you can plug in the missiles if you want to that would be on the underside of the wings. You don't have to do it, but it does cover up the gaps and makes him look a bit more menacing. And here he is alongside Fans Toys Goose, if you'll stand up for me. Now, this is quite a stark difference. I know again, Fans Toys going for a G1 aesthetic, Zeta Toys aren't, but this is quite different. They, they almost look like completely different bots. If you look at the face, you look at the colours used, you look at the proportion of the chest versus the proportion to chest on fan size. This is obviously much smaller here versus this being much of the body. You can clearly see this robot mode has been designed with the combined mode in mind. 
This, not so much, but of course it's hard to say. We haven't seen the finished product yet. I can't believe how good Goose is and how not so good Down Thrust is. There is, they're supposed to be the same character. They're supposed to be Skydive. You see the real differences around the back, and this is an interesting one. The back, if I've got that tabbed in correctly, it's quite a mess back there, but I don't particularly mind about the back kibble and transformers. You don't particularly see them, but that's quite a mess for housing a jet. The Zeta Toys version, on the other hand, is actually quite clean. So that's one thing I will say. It's a shame that there is that much difference between the two, particularly when you look at some of the others and how they compare up to their fans toys counterparts. But this is overwhelmingly in Goose's favour for preference. And here is Skydive in his jet mode. And it is probably the weakest of the jet modes that I've come across. And it's not to say it's a bad jet mode, it's really not. Uh, it tabs in quite well, apart from this one part at the back, which I just can't seem to get completely aligned. But it's still very nice. It is a very jet representation. You have no trouble believing this is what a fighter jet of skydive style would look like. Um, I do think for the metallic paint, the main body is fine, but the tail fin absolutely stands out. It's a really nice sparkly deep blue. It's a very attractive colour. I also noticed this that's quite cool. I hope it comes up on camera. You can see there there's almost like a little orange highlight there for the uh, for the afterburner, for the jet engines, I think that's really cool. I love the accessories you can pin onto the underside. So first things first is you can put his gun into two separate pieces under there and you also get four separate missiles which can clip together and sit underneath and that gives it a real military look. And of course the comparison that most people want to see is how does it stand up against Fans Toys Skydive. And it is kind of night and day. There is quite a bit of difference here. Um, now, obviously, Fans Toys are going for a G1 aesthetic, whereas Zeta Toys alt modes tend to be more physical, you know, vehicles. This is what a vehicle representation would look like. But there are quite stark differences in the approach towards Skydive. Not so much with some of the others, but certainly with these ones. So, one thing I will say straight away, this has got die cast. This is not. This is very plastic. That is quite heavy in comparison. But also, you can probably see on camera, the black and the yellow on the wings, there is a considerable difference. This is painted exceptionally well, the fans' toys. The yellow really stands out. The colour scheme in general is really, really good. But it's not to say that this isn't, but the yellow is a bit more faded in comparison. The cockpit, of course, is painted a smoky black colour, and this is translucent. The nose cones are done completely different. The undersides on both are much the same in terms of thickness and hiding a bot underneath. There isn't too much difference there. But considering this is the metallic paint, that tail fin, again, both are very nice, but I do prefer the Zeta Toys one. It's a lovely sparkly blue. But there are quite considerable differences with two representations of the same character from two different companies. And next up we have Fireflight in his robot mode, and this is the one I probably had the most issues with. I certainly seem to have issues with him standing up. As you can probably tell, he's leaning back quite a bit. Maybe I haven't transformed everything right, but it does seem very back-heavy. There's a lot to it, be it with the back of the legs, the wings, the jets all folded up and splitted, and the nose cone. It's, it's quite a lot of back kibble to him. But... It's one th redeeming feature, I will say, is that, again, that head sculpt, and I'll bring it in a bit closer, you might be able to see, it's got a very cheeky chappy expression to it. Now, I'm under the impression that when the set was first released, it just had a very bland face with a faceplate on. There wasn't a lot of character there. But what you can see, he's obviously got a lovely facial expression to him, which has got a metallic sheen to the faceplate itself, along with those lovely crystal blue eyes. That is a very, very nicely done head sculpt. It actually kind of makes you want the rest of the set done that way, especially when you look at Skydive. So that is definitely this figure's redeeming feature. It's, again, not as metallic as I would like. Considering he is a good 70% red in this form, the red, again, seems very muted. Maybe that's kind of the aesthetic they wanted to go for with this. 
And here is Fireflight in his jet mode. Now, when this was first released in the original paint scheme, I thought this figure looked the best of them all. I thought the red looked really attractive, and I thought, wow, I can't wait to see this in the metallic version. This is really going to be a beautiful color red. And I'm just a little bit underwhelmed with it. I'm a little bit underwhelmed with this figure as a whole. I don't know what it is, and I don't know if I'm making this up, but something about this just feels very tinny. It doesn't feel like the others feel. Now, it's got to be the same plastic, so I'm, it must just be in my head, but just when I pick it up and handle it, it doesn't wow me like Skydive and Air Raid do. It's certainly not a disaster of a figure. It wasn't the easiest to transform. I couldn't get the legs tapping in and this fin that comes back on this spine. Couldn't get That was a bit fiddly. This one's got landing gears at least, so it does stand up quite well. But I don't know what it is. Something about this just makes me feel I wish it was better. I really don't know why. But something about it just makes me go, eh, not as good as I hoped. And of course I should mention I haven't attached the same accessories that you get. You get the two guns that split apart and you get the missiles that go on the underside of the wings. But it comes with that as well as the rest of the figures. But for comparison, I don't have another Fireflight to hand. I also don't have another Masterpiece scale jet to really show you. Fans Toys haven't got that far yet. But for some kind of representation, here it is against Unique Toys version of Octane. Um, no comparison really, completely different company, completely different aesthetic. Both technically triple changes, you know my views on that, but there you go. And next up we have Slingshot. Now, this is one that I was really looking forward to, and I've got to say, it doesn't disappoint fresh out the box. The head sculpt is 100% where the money is at. That is a lovely representation of the figure. That kind of orange chrome dome with the golden visor plate, it's really nice, it really pops out. I just I'll bring it in so you can see. There's a surprising amount of character to it. It, it gives that kind of, I don't know, it really comes across as a masterpiece vibe with the size of the jet on the back, the colors on top, and, and it's just it just really captures something. I'm not certain that these jets were supposed to go upwards, so they could go forwards, I'm not sure on that one. Well, whether they tuck away. But it's still a very good representation of a character that I always found very, very annoying, which is quite funny. But I think it's a lovely representation of Slingshot. Obviously, probably the best one on the market. Fans Toys haven't got that far with their set yet. But it's done really, really well. Again, much like with the other bots, I would have liked this red to have popped that little bit more. It's quite muted in person. It's, it's almost a burgundy colour red and I would like that to have been a very metallic red and this is a metallic set and it isn't. But the colours elsewhere are really good. The, the off-white colouring for the rest of the body is quite nice. The head sculpt is wonderful. So yeah, overall very impressed with the aesthetics of this figure. And he comes with his gun just like everybody else. Much the same, pegs in, on the hand and can store in jet mode. And I don't have another representation of Slingshot to put him alongside, but here he is alongside a standard car bot in Masterpiece scale. Here he is alongside Masterpiece Sunstreaker. And here is Slingshot in his jet mode. And this was the one I was really looking forward to. This was the one that I felt looked the best out of all of them. I guess this is a Harrier. It really reminds me of a Harrier jet. And it's a jet that I do always like. I remember seeing one for the first time as a kid. It is a very good jet, it's probably the best mould of all the jets, but I have got some issues with this one. So first things first, I'll show you this. Now, of course it's got landing gear, just like Fireflight did. And this one I do like, I'll show you this. This is why I do think it's a Harrier, apart from the shape of it. It's got kind of these, uh, I don't know what they're called, but they're like their own propulsion jets. Which I remember seeing this as a kid. I remember seeing a Harrier jet come along and then just hover in air and turn around. And when you're about 11 years old, that's quite cool. So that's nice that you can do that. Um, but one problem I do have, actually, I've got a couple of problems, I'm afraid to say. I do struggle tabbing in the wings. I don't know why, but I really have to give them some force to go in, more force than I'm comfortable giving. But the biggest problem of all is this. Now, this is actually, if I hold up here, you might be able to see. This is the chest piece of the robot mode. That is the robot head turned around. You can just see there. 
So this goes down over the shoulder. The thing is, it's cut the right way, but if I turn it this way, you might be able to see it. It's got some detail on it. Now, you'll have to take my word for it. The one on the other side is supposed to sit on top of the shoulder, and then as it transforms into jet mode, it folds back inside here. Now this side doesn't do it. It won't go any further back than that. If I push it anymore, it's going to break. So this is just an issue with my copy. But I, I got it printed on the wrong side, and I actually think it's the hinge. I think it's been, the piece of plastic's been cut the right way, but I think it's been mirrored version for the hinge. So I can't get the full rotation, and I can't fold it all the way back so it goes inside here for the jet mode. Now, thankfully, it doesn't affect the transformation, but that was my first thought. I thought, I'm either going to have to break this, or I send it back for one piece of plastic, which is a bit excessive. It's quite annoying. We'll have to see if it, it does affect the transformation in, into combined mode, because then that is going to be an issue. But it didn't affect getting into jet mode, but I have got this that sitting out now. And it's, it's a shame, because I still think this is probably the most attractive jet done. I would say the metallic paint doesn't do this as much justice as I'd hoped it would. Um, I think the original version, the plain white, with an orange tinted cockpit, very G1 of course, I think that would look the best of them all. But again, I do like what they have done with it, the highlights on the wings and on the tail. I love the sort of the chunkiness at the front with the two fan engines, and it is very clean underneath. So I do really like it. I'm not entirely sure what this is for as well. This can come off, but I'm really not sure what it is. Not sure why that's there. I do like it, but I have got some issues, at least with my version. And next we have Air Raid in his bot mode. And this is the one I've been most impressed with out of the whole set, just taking him straight out of the box. The clean cut of the sculpting, the dimensions of the head sculpt and the chest piece, it just looks really, really good. This is the one that really stands out for me, certainly in comparison to the others. Again, talking about the face sculpt, that kind of silvery painted face with the piercing blue metallic eyes, has a lot of character to it. I love the sort of the shaping of the top of the head as well. It's really got a lot of character to it. Things like that make such a difference. But I don't know what it is, just like the height of the shoulders make a difference, the dimensions of the chest piece. It really comes together very well. Again, very clean from the back, hides the jet very well, everything folds away nicely. It's their best attempt of a bot mode in this set, I think anyway. I like the white, it is again a bit of an off-white, that metallic paint doesn't do the justice on the red which seems to be the theme with all of the bots here, but still considering his jet mode is largely black, there's a lot to like about this figure, this is the best one by far I think, the legs clean up quite nicely as well with the feet, very impressed with it. And of course like the others you can tab in his gun if you want to, and if you felt inclined you could put these missiles that would go underside of the wings on his shoulders or drop them on the floor. And for comparison here he is alongside Fans Toys Iceman or their version of Air Raid. I've transformed that in a bit of a hurry so I don't think I've done its wings correctly so bear with me on that one. Uh, this is a really close one to call because they're both incredibly good figures. I do really really like Zeta's Air Raid. There's something about it that just really hits a chord with me. This is a very clean version with the Fans Toys one. The whites, the, the red use, the metallic sheen or the clear plastic red with a with red tint to it on the chest plate is really quite stunning. And again, a very G1 inspired head. But I think this is just done really, really well. I like the proportions on the arms, on the shoulders. Again, I just wish that red chest plate was a bit more like the Fans Toys one, this metallic red. This shines really well when you get the light on it. This just seems a bit dead. Just the red. But overall, I think the Zeta Air Raid is the better of the two. But it is a close call. And here is Air Raid in his jet mode. And this is a lovely, lovely figure. Straight away, it looks stunning. The paint on the wings, the ascents, right on the tail fins as well, it has a bit of character towards it. I think it is probably the most attractive looking jet mode in terms of its decal. Uh, and of course, just like with Skydive, I've attached the missiles that you get as well. I haven't attached the guns, they're quite fiddly to get apart. 
But same story again, you get the clear translucent cockpit, which opens up. The landing gear underneath, which is a bit easier to get on this one. Again, fairly clean on the underside. But I do think it is a very attractive colour. I do have some tabbing in issues, stuff doesn't want to completely line up. But I might just have to fiddle around with it some more. It's, again, feet on this, on most of them seem to be a bit of a problem. You don't get quite the same effects on the jet engines as you do with skydive. But overall, the highlights used on the edge of the wings and the tail fins as well, I think is a lovely, lovely representation. And for comparison, here it is alongside Fans Toys representation of Air Raid, their Iceman. And I really like this figure, this jet. It's a very good figure, quite a complicated transformation as most of them are. But what's interesting is as much as I like Fans Toys and they are quite premium with their products, I think this is better. I think this is done better of the two. Now, same thing as before. This is plastic, this has got die cast in, this is considerably heavier. But if you can look and you can just see the paint. On the Fans Toys wings, it's much finer. Now, it's very subtle, but there's nothing on the tail fins. It's just a solid black body with some red and black highlights on the wings, and then a black cockpit. There's not much going on, it's just kind of black, 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 and then obviously the white butt underneath. But for the Zeta representation, there is kind of a bit more character to it. There's just a bit more highlight going on. And I just think it's a really attractive colour scheme, particularly when you compare it to the Fans Toys version. And whilst it cleans up very well, both of them do on the underside, actually, to be fair to them. What I thought was an interesting thing, if I put that down, the, I don't know what a technical term is, but I guess the inlet fans to cool the engine, they are a bit more prominent and I guess more representative of an actual jet than on the Fans Toys version. They're almost a bit of an afterthought. And whilst it's certainly not a deal breaker, I just thought that was nice that Zeta put the time in to accentuate that a little bit. So overall, I'm very impressed with the Zeta representation on this one. And here is Silverbolt in his bot mode. Now, I'm actually quite impressed with this first out of the box. I think this is a better representation than I was expecting. There are one or two issues with it, but for first impressions, one thing that did come to mind, and it's a bit of a shame, if I bring it in closer, you can see the yellow that's used on the inside of the arm and on the thighs is very much a mustard or golden colour. But then when you look at the torso, it's kind of a paler yellow, and it's a shame that it's not uniform. That, that kind of misses a trick for me. So I don't know if you can see that on camera. And I guess because it folds away in combined mode and jet mode, it probably wasn't given the same level of paint. But you probably can see the thigh does glisten quite a bit with the metallic paint. This almost doesn't look like it has been given metallic paint, or if it has, it's certainly of a different shade. So that does stand out. Again, I'm not wild on the red on the chest plate. The head sculpt, on the other hand, is very, very good. It's a very nice head sculpt of the shape of the head to begin with, but again, that silver painted face with those piercing blue eyes. It's almost kind of hypnotic, you just kind of want to stare at it. It really does give character to it. I was a bit concerned with this set because when I looked at them before, in the original paint scheme, I felt that Silverbolt probably looked the weakest. He didn't look particularly good, looked quite soulless and hollow, but I'm very pleased to say with this metallic paint, Whilst he doesn't look white, as the Silverbolt character generally is, it does give a bit more character to him. It does make him pop a bit more. Otherwise, it cleans up quite well. The back of the Concorde, or the back of the Supersonic Jet, looks very good. Folds away probably as you'd expect. Stuff tends to fold apart. And some lovely ratchets on the shoulders and on the arms. And of course he comes with his gun as well. Now this forms part of the cannon used for Superion as well. So it does seem a bit oversized for him actually, but it's designed with the overall bigger gun in mind. It actually does look a little bit too big for him and he's not a small figure. But there you go and that's how he looks like when he holds it. And here he is alongside Fans Toys Maverick. Now this is quite interesting. Now obviously Fans Toys Maverick, their Silver Bolt, is very G1, and Zeta Toy's Silver Bolt isn't, or Silver Arrow, to give him his proper name. Now, 
it's not to say that Silver Arrow is bad. It really, really isn't. I love the face sculpt. I like the proportions of it. There's many, many things I like about this. I do absolutely love the Fans Toys Maverick figure, but that's not necessarily what we're here to talk about. But interesting, when you look at the eyes, they're going for the similarities, that kind of soft but piercing blue. But I do think Zeta's face sculpt is much better. I think it is a very very autonomous version of Silverbolt. This has a lot of G1 character to it, this doesn't, but this is still a very, very good figure. And here is Silverbolt in his jet mode. And again, the metallic paint doesn't do it justice. I Maybe I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but of course, Concord and Silverbolt is white. And really in this mode, it just stands out as silver. Now it's not an unattractive silver at all, but it also doesn't look one like Concord, and it doesn't look like Silverbolt. But it's still, the more I look at it, the more I do like it. It is quite hefty, of course, there's a lot to it. It does transform quite well. It is fairly thick on the underside, as most Silverbolts are. It has a landing gear that actually has a spring to it. But I do seem to recall, and I might be wrong on this, the nose cone on the original was white as per the rest of the paint scheme. And this was something I was kind of looking forward to, because that would be quite representative of an actual Concorde. You know, that's neither here nor there. This is representative to the toy, I seem to recall. I don't think it was in the cartoon. It dips down as well, as Concorde would when coming into land, so the pilot could see where they were going. So that's quite good. I do like it. I do like little things like the shoulders half open. You can just see there, they fold down and you get the vents on the side. I think it is quite good. Um, I do like some of the highlights, like the red on the end of the wings and the yellow you use for the interior lights. And this has got rear wheels at the back here for the engines. So it is a very chunky representation, very big. But it isn't bad. It isn't bad at all. One thing I do want to say as well is I have more scuff marks on Silverbolt than I do on anything else there's a fine line here just little things but there's enough to be noticeable and especially when you have this kind of paint scheme and this light of a paint scheme but I have noticed there's brushes here and there and it's a real shame it's just one thing that you are paying for with a metallic edition set is to have a very nice paint scheme to it so when you see scuff marks here and there it just dampens your spirit again this is just on my version and here it is alongside Fans Toys Maverick. Now, obviously, I had to move back a bit to get these two into the same shot. They're both very big boys. Now, forgive me, I had to transform Maverick in a bit of double quick time, so he's not tabbed in properly everywhere. But what I would say is there are some very instant differences to it. One being the size. Maverick is much bigger than the Zeta Toys version of Silverbolt. Now, this is clearly a representation of a G1 Silverbolt and definitely looks like a Concorde. Whether this is meant to be a Concorde or another supersonic jet of another description is up for debate. They're, the differences are quite startling. Now, first things first, and again, I have transformed this a bit quickly. The underside of this Silverbolt is very, very clean. That's a very thin transformation of Silverbolt. This is why I do think this is one of my favourite figures, despite not being able to tab everything in every time. This is much, much thicker. This is something that Fans Toys does do better, but at least with this figure, I will just say it is very apparent with Silverbolt. But again, you can see this has gone for a metallic paint set and this is very G1, but the paint is completely different, the scale is completely different, The even things like the nose cone look very different. It's it's quite startling how different they actually are. Both are good, both are absolutely fine, but you can definitely see two very distinct different directions. And here they all are together in jet mode. I had to borrow a couple of stands just to get everyone in the same shot together. Now, typical of Zeta, these look wonderful in their alt modes. They, they look like alt modes first. They look like actual planes before they look like transformers. Whether they're supposed to be more military, commercial, they really capture that aesthetic very, very well. I love the accessories you get with the guns and the missiles on the underside of the wings. Again, it just really adds into that military or vehicle vibe. I expected the metallic paint to pop a bit more in these modes. It's left me feeling a little bit underwhelmed. 
With the Bruticus set, the Combaticons, the metallic paint looked absolutely lovely. I remember in particular on Onslaught or Swindle or Brawl, it made every aspect from robot to alt mode to combiner mode really look stunning. On these modes, it's nice, but it's not as eye-catching as I would hope it would be. I thought these would really look quite shiny and vibrant, and they do to an extent. Now, this may be an issue as well before the wings, as they fold out on the sides, you can see maybe on Air Raid at the back and certainly here, they don't like to fold out and stay out. You have to really keep wedging stuff into place. It's not that they're floppy, but they don't want to align particularly. Um, scuff marks are an issue on a couple, noticeably with Silver Bolt. And I don't know what it is, I just... Fireflight is the one... is kind of the one that stands out of the group. I don't know why, and not necessarily in a good way. I do like the set, particularly when you see them all together. I just wish I liked the paintwork a little bit more. I will finish off on a positive. I think the blue tail fin on Skydive looks fantastic. I think the transformation for Silver Bolt is the best one of the lot. I love the mold of Slingshot. The best one of them all is Air Raid. That's even better than the Fans Toys version. I just love that representation of that jet. And finally, this is them all together in robot mode. And they do look very good together. As with most combiner teams, they do generally look good together because they are all designed with the same idea in mind. What you can say straight away is that particularly with Firefly and Slingshot, they have the same shoulders. Everything slopes away, probably with the combined mode in mind. Air Raid and Skydive look very similar because they are both the legs of the combined mode. But even so, with Silver Bolt being the largest of the bots, and generally the torso is the larger of the bots, he doesn't look too out of place here. He is bigger particularly when you put them alongside Firefly. But by the time you take into account the top of the jets, it doesn't look too out of place. Overall, it is a good set, but there are issues. I would say scuff marks are apparent when you look at Air Raid, when you look at some parts of Silver Bolt. There is scuff marks on the painting, which is a bit of a shame. The accessories are very welcome. They work quite well, particularly when they're all holding their guns, although I cannot for the life of me work out what I'm doing with Silver Bolt's gun. It's it's a shame it doesn't wow me as much as I'd hoped. I do like the moulds of the bots. I do think it is missing diecast, but that's an issue for another day. But to take them on face value for what they are, and the characteristics of the face sculpts, at least on four-fifths of them, is very, very well done. Okay, let's get these guys transformed, shall we? And here is Superitron in his combined mode, and this is one hell of a figure. I mean, it really does define the scale of Masterpiece Combiner. It just looks so good. I've had to come so far back just to get it in the same shot. Now, obviously there is parts forming involved, and I didn't show you this, but you can see the torso and the legs. That's all just one detachable piece that you plug all of the adjoining bots into. Now... That is parts forming, and a lot of people do feel a bit weird about parts forming. It's not really a transformer if you have to assemble it. But if this is the finished product, then I am all for it. Right, so to give you a quick tour of Superior, and we'll try and do it from here first, if I try and zoom in a bit. So if I go in, I'm zooming in on the sort of crutch area, you can see there the head sculpt is bang on it really really does look good and even with the tops of the jets at the top of the shoulders they do give it a real towering presence without being swamped now the hands of course are metallic as well as the kind of the torso the wings if i just go back up to the side of the chest piece they do have to kind of fold inwards they're on hinges so it's fine but the width of the jets the sh the, the chest and the shoulders in combined mode kind of makes those wings point inwards and you can actually see that bit of uh, plastic I had issue with with slingshot it does stick out but it doesn't affect the combined mode but it's a shame that it's there nonetheless so yeah the hands are metallic and fully posable fingers knuckles so that's very welcome and then you come down to attaching the torso to the legs and it, it was fine now that was actually quite good pegging them in, it actually seems more sturdy than the Baruticus set. What I found was a bit of an issue was plugging in the legs, now, or the feet I should say. They plug in just the same, they have their inward ankle tilt which is fine, but they don't fasten as well as the Combaticons did. I'm not entirely sure as to why, 
but they just didn't click in as much as I would like. The gun is there, the gun is very big, very impressive, almost too big, maybe, but that's me being super critical. It's still a wonderful looking bot. And what I have here is a piece of absolute die cast that's actually got a bit of scuff on it that sits onto his chest. Now, I guess what you can see now is more of a toy accurate version from the old G1 days, and it does come with a G1 accurate head in terms of the toy, and I'll show you that in a second. But this metal piece, I think, is to be more tune specific, and you can be stuck on. It actually sits on pretty well. It's got grooves at the back. I prefer it, but it's interesting that this is probably the only die cast piece that comes in this set, maybe with the exception of the feet. And just on the subject of heads, here is the alternative head that it comes with. This is the more toy accurate, and it's a very good sculpt. It's got uh, light up visors because batteries can go inside it, as well as these nice little yellow painted vents. The batteries go into the back. They are different batteries than what the Zeta toys Bruticus needed, and I was a bit surprised at that. But according to the instructions, they need AG4 batteries, or it was uh, something like L. S, no, it was LG626, it was a funny number that I wasn't particularly familiar with, but I took it from the instructions and I went and bought them. And they're tiny, tiny little things, they're kind of watch batteries, but it said on there, so it's, uh, where are we? LR626, and that's what it said on the instructions, and I put them in, and it takes three batteries, and it still doesn't work. Press the button, nothing happens. They do rattle around a bit as well, which is a bit surprising. Uh, so I was hoping to show you some sound effects there for the preset noises. You may have heard them before, but this head that's on this Superion at the moment will have a certain type of noises preset, and if it's anything like the Bruticus one, this head will have its own preset noises as well. But considering they were never consistent with Superion's voice throughout the entire cartoon anyway, I don't think we're going to be missing an awful lot. One other thing you can do is you can detach the wings and make this a bit of a clean mode in a way and you can detach them off the forearms, off Fireflight and Slingshot, and also off the side of the feet, off Air Raid and Skydive. Whilst this does present a very clean mode, and it might be very tune accurate, because in the G1 cartoon you didn't particularly see all of the limbs and their jet parts when he was in combined mode, the only thing I'd say with this is you do see the pegs where everything would attach onto, particularly on the legs, it does kind of stick out a little bit. And I guess I look at this as the Emperor without any clothes on. The big issue I have with this is the metallic paint used. Uh, as I've mentioned kind of throughout, particularly when you look at the red, it just can come across a bit dead. Now, maybe the light here might accentuate that a bit more, but in the flesh, it does seem almost like a blood red rather than a metallic red. And particularly in superior mode, in combined mode, when you look at Firefly on the side here, and the top of the torso and the waist, there is a large part of red on this figure and it's not the most metallic red that's on the market and I would have liked that to have been a bit better, I was expecting that to be a bit better. But things like the hands, the torso, the feet, that comes across very well, that does give a metallic feel to it and quite autonomous but I guess I wanted the red to pop a bit more and it just feel it looks a bit too dull and that's just one thing that keeps going around my mind. It's good but I wanted it to be better as far as the paint goes. Now I can't particularly show you some of its articulation because I can't really get close enough to do anything with it. It's It's got fairly decent articulation, I'll take some still photos and show you at the end of some of the poses you can get it into. One thing I have noticed is it has got that tilting forward hip that the Bruticus set had as well. I guess I'm a bit concerned with the jets facing backwards on the feet, on the legs I should say. Is there going to be restrictions on the knee bend? But we'll find out when I do the photos at the end. I think what was interesting when this set came out before, they said you don't need uh, Silverbolt to make Superion. And it's true because Silverbolt, much like Onslaught in the Combaticon set, just folds up into a bit of a square but it doesn't form anything of the torso. You can just build Superion using the detachable torso. But it actually is worth mentioning for something that transforms into a Concorde jet, folds up into a square and gives some much needed added backpacking. Actually, I'll just give you a shot from the back there and you can see how well this actually clears up when you can see there where Silverbolt is sitting in, in a very cube-like form. That actually cleans up really well even when you look down at the feet and the back of the legs. It's a very 
tidy way to store five jets. And the comparison that we all want to see, here he is alongside Zeta Toy's Baruticus. And it really is the leading masterpiece combiner on the toy market today. Both have their issues, neither are perfect, but I don't think anything is coming close to this for a masterpiece combiner representation. And just at the bottom there, you can see a masterpiece Megatron just for scale. So my final verdict is that this is a wonderful combiner piece. It's clearly made with the combine mode in mind. It looks so good as a mould. It is the best superior masterpiece on the market, probably because it is the only masterpiece superior on the market. But it is very, very good. Um, the metallic paint has disappointed me a bit. I felt with the Bruticus, the Combaticons, it looked so much better. On this, just not as much. But my final verdict on this is three Rodimus Star Badges. I would have given it higher, I wanted to give it higher, but I was almost going to give it a lesser rating. It is the combined mode that saved it. It looks so imposing, but the paint was a bit of a miss for me. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching, and like always, I'll see you on the next one.